Hi, this is Paula. I'm Paula. This is Knitting Pipeline Extra and it's all quilty. I did the knitting part separately because my I can't really handle huge files in on my <laughs> probably in my brain. But anyway, this is part B of number 13 and it's all quilting. So if you're not interested in that, then yeah, I guess go next time. Come next time. I have a pretty much weekly, although I've it's not always weekly because I travel a lot, but when I can, I do an audio podcast called Knitting Pipeline. And the show notes are at knittingpipeline.com. I'm not going to link to everything that I talked about, either in the knitting or the quilting, but I've tried to highlight, do most of them as highlights. Thanks for coming today and listening to me. I have a lot of quilting. I pretty much took a break from quilting, not intentionally, but I finished a quilt around Thanksgiving and then we had family coming for Christmas. So I cleared out my stuff downstairs and made it look really nice, which normally it only looks nice to me because it's a lot of quilting down there. And then with all the stuff I had going on, uh, the retreat in February, and then I went to the UK in March, Scotland in England, and then down to see my granddaughter, and then off April 1st to the Knitting Pipeline Retreat in Georgia. So then I got back into it. And first of all, we're having another grandchild due in August, which we're just thrilled about. So of course, I made a quilt for her. And this is the one I made. It's all made from 1930s reproduction fabrics. I know my head goes out of the camera range, but that's okay, because I mainly want you to see the quilt. Here's the quilt. And the only modification I made to the original pattern is that this, these three borders were supposed to be all the same size. And I decided to make this bright brighter pink border skinnier and I really like it. I think it just adds a little interest. It's not something you would notice probably if you're looking at it, but I liked it. And I also liked that it had three bo three borders at the top and two borders on the side. I really like the 1930s reproduction fabrics. So this was a collection, I believe it was, let's see, Robert Kaufman and the designer is Darlene Zimmerman. Excuse me, sorry, I'm gonna try not to make sounds like that in case you have earbuds in. And then what I do when I have a collection like that, that I'm gonna make a quilt, I like to bring in a few other fabrics as well, just, just so it doesn't look too homogeneous, I guess. So for the most part, these block in a blocks here, they're fat quarters that I picked up mostly at Pebbler's Way Quilt Company. And there, there's some that are repeated. And then some of the two and a half inch strips I used were from another collection. I broke into, <laughs> I broke into another collection just to get a couple of fabrics. I might regret that at some point, but let me show you the pattern I used. I, I like these for baby quilts. You can get, I got this at Peddler's Way Quilt Company, but I've seen it at Joanne Fabrics as well. I like to buy from my local quilt shops as much as I can, but. So this is Three Times the Charm by Me and My Sister Designs. Seven quick and easy designs, 21 unique looks, and it's charm packs, made with charm packs. Now, charm packs are five and a half inch squares. They're five inch, they're five inch squares five inch squares and this one called for this is called Fiona the one that I made see it looks quite different when you see it in another fabric and then when you see other color schemes they've done it in it looks totally different but what they did they called for two two charm no one charm pack and then they made the nine patches. This is a nine patch. They made the nine patches by cutting those charm packs, uh, those squares down. Instead of doing that, I used a jelly roll, which a jelly roll is two and a half inch strips. Usually, this is this is a jelly roll, and 
So they're 40, usually 42, 40 to 42, two and a half inch strips, the width of the fabric. So instead of making the char the, the nine patches square by square, I sewed the strips together, cut them in pieces. You can find tutorials on this. Just go look, uh, Missouri Star Quilt Company, look nine patch, and you'll see how she does it. And it, it goes quicker. And I think for me, it's more accurate as well. And I enjoyed making these block in a blocks the way that they did it in this book because they made the square bigger and then you cut it down to size, which means that these points don't get lost in the seams here. I finished it off with free motion quilting and I tried really hard to open up my free motion before I had a really small footprint <laughs> and it was quite dense. And so I really made a point of trying to widen it out and that makes the quilt, I think, a little softer in the long run. So when I was <clears throat> doing the borders on this, I didn't have this blue fabric and I kept trying to work it out with something I already had. And here, I had a couple of different fabrics that were auditioning. There was this blue, which just didn't seem right. I bought it for this and it didn't seem right. And then I had this, which I used in the other border and I could have, I could have maybe not used it again here, but I could have switched these around or something. And then I had this fabric, which I've had for a really long time. I thought, well, no, that's just not right. And there were a couple more I tried as well. And finally, I, I could not get this rabbit fabric out of my head. It came out of the second jelly roll that I opened up, I believe. And I just, you know, it was in the first one. But anyway, I wanted this blue and I wanted these bunnies. So I ended up going online. I don't think they're making this anymore. This Robert Kaufman, Darlene Zimmerman. It's called Nap Time is what this fabric is called, uh, the color way. But I did find it online and I ordered the yardage for it. So I had to wait for that, which meant it was a good time to clean up my quilting space a little bit. And then I used it for the backing as well. Sometimes you find a fabric too, like this one, this red and pink and blue one. I just find this to be a really good transition fabric for a lot of my 1930s reproduction quilts. I've used it a couple of times. So when I find something like that, I try to buy a little extra of it. And you can see it's used in here, and then I used it for the borders as well, or the top and bottom border on, the, on this one. So this is called Fiona from Three Times a Charm. I'm really happy. I haven't washed it yet, but you know, quilts just get better and better as you use them. And I will, after we find out the birth date and her name, I'll put a label on it, and I've got some ideas for that. So when I ordered that nap time fabric, the bunny one. See if there's anything else I want to say about. No, I think that's good. <laughs> I saw this on the same site and I just thought it was so adorable. There are all these little big nets of rabbits. It's a Peter Rabbit type um, fabric. So each little thing here is a seam. And I really would love to make a quilt and fussy cut those little seams and put them in these squares. I'm tempted to make two quilts for this baby. I don't know if I will because I have another project coming up, but that would be a lot of fun. Maybe I'll make a blanket to just keep here at my house for them when they visit. And this is, let's see, if you're trying to find it somewhere, with fabric, unlike yarn, <laughs> with fabric it's printed on the selvage. And so this is Penny Rose Fabrics. It's C6020 Bunnies and Cream by Lauren, uh, excuse me, Lauren Nash, 2017. So it's pretty new. You should be able to find it if you love that bunny fabric, which I do <laughs> intensely, perhaps. Okay, so that's quilt for our little one coming soon. And then while I was 
waiting for that. I did tidy up my work area down there. Sometimes you just need to tackle that head on. And that was when I, I've shown you this before, but when I, I made these little notions pouches and I made them from the book. Oh, <laughs> I have to go get the book, sorry. <laughs> Turned out there was more than one thing I needed to get down there. So I made those little notion pouches from this book, which is called, here it is. Here they are in the book, called Sweetly Stitched Handmaids. I'll try not to hit the table. It's really hard to not do it, but Sweetly Stitched Handmaids by Amy Cinebaldi, 18 Projects to Sew for You and Your Loved Ones. This book has the most gorgeous projects in it. So that was the first one I tackled. Now, I'm talking about this for a reason. I know I mentioned it before, but this one had these tiny squares in it. And I made, I was intending to make four of these. I ended up making two, giving those two away, finishing this one. I gave Helen one in Georgia and Joe one. And then I came home and had a little bit to finish up on this one. I had done the patchwork for another one, but I just couldn't bring myself <laughs> to make another bag. I don't really like sewing project bags at all, so no one has to worry about me uh, getting in competition on, the <laughs> on that front. I don't really like to make things more than once, but generally speaking, but I did on these because I kind of did it in, uh, what do you call it? Piecework, I guess. No, not that. Uh, assembly line. Assembly line is the word I'm looking for. So anyway, while I was waiting for the fabric to finish that quilt, I decided to do something with these little strips that I had made. And I, I used some linen, and I just made a little mat, basically. I thought, well, that would be for a tea mug or whatever. But then I had the idea of sewing it into a needle case, which I'm not sure I'm going to do yet. But I got some cream-colored wool, felted wool, and to make this into a needle case, I might cut another piece of this so it would be several pages. And that way, when you're embroidering, you can have your needles in there with thread on them. And it just keeps them a little bit neater. And then I could stitch another one in here if I wanted to. So I haven't decided yet because, I don't know, I kind of like the idea of both. <laughs> but who knows what I'll do. So that was the first project I made out of this book. And then I decided to make the bear pillow. And this is quite possibly one of the cutest things I've ever made in my life, but I'm not done with it yet. I'm showing it to you because I don't know when I'll get to do another one of these videos. And it's for my granddaughter's birthday in June. So I'll, it'll be out of my hands by then. But I have finished the top of the pillow. And it's a bear. I think it is so, so cute. The snout is stuffed, so there's some 3D going on here. You probably can't see, but there's applique. These are applique on. And then it's quilted a little bit. The ears fold down. They come out of this what's, um, half square triangle up in the corners. And it's let's see, it's 16 by 16. All I have to do now is the back of it. It called for just stuffing polyester. The, the back is just a fold over. I might put a button on it, but it just called for stuffing polyester in there. And I thought, no, I, I bought a pillow form and I hope it fits in there. If not, I'll make a case before I'll just stuff. That that would be disaster to me <laughs> for, for a two-year-old to have access to a bunch of polyester fiber fill. But anyway, I just think it's so cute. And I should finish this tonight, I think. The backing will be the same as this green fabric, which it is a very tiny print, but it reads green from a distance, and I'm sure, on the screen. Now, this lace has a little bit of a story because there was a crochet, really narrow crochet trim called for where, on this seam. And I couldn't find anything like that, but I remembered that my grandmother had 
had given me a box of old lace. She called it Marissa Lace. Marissa was the town that she was from. And these were, I don't know, it was probably cut off pillowcases or other things. They're just, there's one really long piece. And I thought, well, I, I had to practically tear my downstairs apart to find the stuff. And then I washed it and ironed it all. And then I thought, if one of the pieces fits the 16 inch piece, I'm going to go ahead and use it. I always thought I'd keep that lace in case I had a daughter to sew for, and I don't really like sewing clothing. So anyway, this piece fit perfectly here. It could have been a little, another half inch would have been nice. It's not going to fit in the seam here, but it's fine. And I went ahead and put it on there. So that's the story with that. And I'm really excited. I, I know her mother will love it, and I hope that she loves it. And again, that's from this book, Sweetly Stitched Handmaids by Amy Cinebaldi. And I'll probably make other things out of it. Okay, a couple of things here. I think I've mentioned, I know I've mentioned before, Grace and Peace Quilting. Nancy, and Nancy is the person that I send things to to finish off uh, the quilts when I can't do it myself. If I can do it myself, it's not too big, I will go ahead and, and do it. But if I, if I can't do it, <laughs> Nancy to the rescue. So Nancy was doing, on her blog, which I have linked to, if you should follow Nancy's blog if you are all interested in quilting or just, I don't know, she's just a lovely person. So I like being in touch with her that way. She made or is making needle cases to put in her Operation Christmas Child boxes. She's going to do 50 girl boxes and, and 50 boy boxes. She and Susanna, I think, together. So one of the things she's doing is making these needle cases, these little needle cases that will have some pins and then some needles. Then she'll put thread and some squares in a fabric in there for the girl boxes. And since I was waiting on that fabric anyway, I need a little project to work on. So I decided to try making those. Now, this little bag here, I did just fine on all these little uh, squares. And that's what this tutorial called for. Nancy used a tutorial from uh, Amy Cinebaldi's blog, this woman's blog called, and she's Nana and Company. I've linked to it in the show notes. So if you want to go there, and I'd like to Nancy's uh, blog as well, Grace and Peace Quilting. So I thought, okay, well, I'll, uh, I'll use these little mini charm things. Jo had given me a gift. She gave me two packages of mini charms from Moda. And these are two and a half inch squares. And the colors are really bright. They're kind of 60-ish. And they came, uh, one package came in this little collectible tin. So I thought, well, this is perfect. I'll cut these little squares up and I'll make the little patch as well. I don't have it here. I, I would show it to you. Maybe I'll take a photo and insert it. They were so crooked. And I didn't know what I had done wrong. And I just thought, I can't make a lot of needle cases with these tiny squares. So I decided to use the squares as they were. Fortunately, I did just cut enough to make, to do a trial on it. I didn't ruin all of them. So the first one I made, the, the first one is this one. And I used pearl cotton to make the ties. I did some hand embroidery, just like a running stitch on the front. And it was okay, but I felt like they needed a little something else. There's that fabric again, that pink fabric I used on the, on the uh, spine of it. So then the other ones I did, I, I did a little something special on all of them. I used a template from this book, Sweet Tweets, Simple Stitches, Whimsical Birds by Erin Cox. These are really cute projects. Quite honestly, though, I think that... They're the kind of thing that look really cute if somebody really knows what they're doing. But if you go off a little bit, I think they could turn out really badly. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, I love the little birds. And so I 
got out my light box, which I'd never used before, and traced some things. So some of these have birds on them with a little bit of um, embroidery. I just did an eye and a beak. I did some legs on some. And then this is applique on with the machine. And then on the inside, they have the, so I'll put, I don't know, I might give, uh, I'll do the operation Christmas child. Some of those probably, if I get invited to graduations, I was thinking, here's another bird. I was thinking I could pin some money on here as a little, um, as a gift. And so then some of them have hearts. One of them has two hearts. That's this one, little hearts and squares. The first one I did, I, I had one piece of felt from the craft store and I cut the, the book or the page part here. They are quilted too. I did a little bit of stitch in the ditch on them. So I, that was okay, but I only had that one piece and I did not want to go out to the store. So I ended up using scraps of batting and I actually like it better. I think they'll hold up just fine. This is not going to go through the wash or anything. So I just use the batting and I like it better. And it's the warm and natural cotton batting. So it just has a little bit better feel to it. Here's, here's another one that's batting, but it's not the warm and natural. It's the one that's kind of, um, I don't know what they call it, but it has a little more of surface to it. And then I just ended up sewing ribbons on. Well, I sewed them into the, between the sandwiches. So I have seven of these. Thank you, Nancy, for a great idea. It was a fun project. I was glad to get done with it. I it. <laughs> but yeah, it was a lot of fun to do. And like I said, those are linked in the show notes. I purchased from Connecting Threads recently. I don't buy a lot from there. Connecting Threads is like the quilting sewing business of knit picks, side of knit picks. It's the same company, I think. And I fell prey to pearl cotton in this collection of colors. I just, I wanted to have it, quite honestly. I don't do that much embroidery. I just do the occasional. For the bear here, I did some, and I've done a little bit on some of these things, but I don't see myself doing a lot of embroidery, but they make me happy. And if I need these colors, well, I have them. I have this all, all in a tray. I, I love trays. And my friend Diane has a blog called The Grandmother Gig. And she reminded me how much I love trays. And I really use them a lot. So I got my embroidery stuff in this one. And I have that. And I have a couple of little embroidery helps. Because even though I've done backstitch a bunch of times, sometimes I have to look at it and try to figure out how to do it again. And then I have a little pincushion bird from Maria Elena Bliss. So let's see what else I have to show you project-wise. I think those are the main things. So I'm going to move into books and some fabric I've bought. My sister has gotten into quilting. I think it happened when she was here at the retreat in February. We went to the quilt corner in Morton and she bought some wool to show how she does her, let's see. Yeah, we bought some wool that we cut into strips for the hooked rug demo. And she looked around in the store and shortly after that she <laughs> got into quilting. So that's really fun for us because we talk every week anyway, and so now we have an added dimension of sharing. We're both fans of Missouri Star Quilt Company, and if you are not aware of them, I've talked about it before, but they're in Hamilton, Missouri, and you should get their newsletter because they have a daily deal, which then we text back, are you tempted to get the deal this week <laughs> or today? So it's been a lot of fun. and. So anyway, maybe if she visits sometime, we could do a video together. That would be really fun. So Block Magazine is from Missouri Star Quilt Company. I subscribe to it. It's so reasonable. I've told you about this before, but I think it's 6 or $7 for the, it's, it's called a magazine, but it's really a book. And you get quite a few patterns in there. And you can see all my tabs on this one. I almost made... The baby quilt in here instead of the one that I made. It's called Baby Kisses. It's a 
really cute pattern. The only thing that I would say is a little, yeah, it's just the way it is, but with the patterns from Missouri Star Quilt Company, they're, they're not just a jelly roll or they're not just, usually it'll be, you're going to need a layer cake and a charm pack. You're going to need, so what I would love for them to do is an index of some kind that you could say, if you just have a jelly roll and you're willing to, you'd generally have to buy background fabric anyway, but if you just have a jelly roll, then these are patterns that would work. If you have a 10 inch square pack and a charm pack, you get the idea, sort of a, I don't know, way of searching like you do for recipes if you have, you got chicken and orange marmalade or something, you can do a search and I don't know why that came into my head because it's not something I actually do. Okay. So, um, yeah, that baby quilt. So there are 10 quilts in this. That, and then there's little stories which, with each quilt. She also does the tutorials on YouTube and also on their site. And eventually, whatever she does as a tutorial comes out in block. It's usually after the tutorial's done, I think, because there's one that's up there now. And then here's the spring volume four. I don't have as many marked in here. I have one uh, marked the nine patch. I, I'm crazy about nine patches. Nine patches and four patches, I think, are my favorite thing in quilting. I could never get tired of them, I don't think. Now this might be, that might be one of my next quilts, but I just wanted to, to touch on that. Now, on the other hand, this book, I've talked about these authors before, Pam and Nikki Lynn Todd, and I bought this book, Antique to Heirloom Jelly Roll Quilts. I have other books by them, and one thing I do really love about their patterns is that when they say jelly roll, they use just a jelly roll and background fabric sometimes, usually, but they use it all too. And so you don't have to think, oh, I have the jelly roll, but I don't have a charm pack to go in there. So it, it's nice. And I've marked a couple in here. I have a wedding quilt that I'm going to be making. I was thinking of giving this as a gift to this couple anyway. And then she asked me if I knew of someone who could make a quilt. She didn't know that I can quilt. And I said, well, I was thinking of making you a quilt anyway, but, um, she had some ideas that she wanted, and I just said, look, just trust me. <laughs> she had sent me some samples, and I said, any quilt I make would be nicer than those samples you said. So that sounds so cocky, but they weren't, real very, they weren't very good. And I said, just trust me. You have enough to do for the wedding. I'll, I'll make something really nice. And I think I'm going to use this. This is Hello Darling by Bonnie and Camille uh, by Moda. It's a jelly roll. She said her favorite color is peach and there's some peach in here and it looks very summery. It's a July, end of July.